Are you wondering about the role of a COMT alteration on hormone balance, how it can lead to an imbalance or uh, alter your hormone levels in general? Uh, we're going to discuss this in detail. My name is Dr. Taranella. We're going to discuss uh, how COMT alterations affect hormone balance and how an alteration in your COMT isn't necessarily going to affect your hormone balance. We're going to look at the whole uh, uh, pathway of estrogen breakdown, uh, which is important, uh, which is implicated in COMT alterations, but so are other uh, uh, enzymes. And so we're going to look at the overview of uh, estrogen breakdown and how COMT alterations can lead to hormone balance and much more. So if this interests you, keep watching. We're going to get into the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a statistic wrong or the name of something wrong. And almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog. You can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. All right, so we want to look at how COMT alterations can affect hormone balance or lead to hormone imbalance. And there's a few different ways that this can happen, but brief, first briefly, um, <coughs> COMT, uh, I've talked about this uh, in other videos, but I'll just kind of go into it in the with a little bit of information here. It's basically an enzyme. Uh, the COMT is an acronym for catechol O-methyltransferase, and basically this enzyme helps your body uh, break down or change catecholamines uh, into a less active form, usually less active form, uh, less uh, stimulating form. But in some cases they become more stimulating, but that's sort of an aside. So um, when you have a COMT genetic alteration or something going on with your COMT enzyme so that it's not working, uh, then uh, this can either increase or decrease the amount of estrogens in your system. And uh, so we'll get into some of the details of how that works. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to point out too, just as an overview, that not all estrogens are the same and not all estrogen metabolites are the same. So, so we want to discuss... Uh, First, uh, estrogen breakdown and normal estrogen metabolism, so we can kind of understand where a COMT alteration may fit in the broader uh, pathway of estrogen breakdown in the body. And of course, this is more per pertinent uh, for female estrogen metabolism, um, but estrogens are also in males, and so it is a similar uh, kind of process for both males and females. Okay, so estrogen breakdown. So there are three different there are three main different types of estrogen. There's E1, which is estrone, there's E2, which is estradiol, and there's E3, which is estriol. Um, since estradiol is the most biologically active, meaning it binds to the receptor uh, with uh, the most affinity and, and seems to have the most activity on the estrogen receptor, we're gonna focus on the breakdown and uh, how this molecule is changed uh, throughout the body as it's being broken down and eliminated. So we're gonna focus on estradiol. So um, so all these uh, estrogens uh, are broken down and eliminated through the body, making use of several different enzymes, uh, including the COMT enzyme. So um, the first step uh, in estradiol being broken down is called uh, uh, hydroxylation. And this occurs through uh, the use of uh, CYP enzymes or cytochrome enzymes. And there's many different types of cytochrome enzymes, which is how you know, a lot of uh, even medications and other hormones and toxins and things are eliminated uh, <clears throat> throughout, uh, throughout our body. Um, it's the uh, specific types of 
uh, cytochrome uh, P450 enzymes that are pertinent for estradiol breakdown. Estradiol uh, basically gets turned into 4-hydroxyestradiol uh, by use of the 1B1 CYP enzyme. And it can also get turned into 2-hydroxyestradiol by use of a different CYP enzyme called 1A1. Now, both of these are basically adding an OH group uh, or hydroxyl uh, group onto the um, onto the, uh, the estradiol mo molecule. And uh, once this occurs, uh, once you have the uh, the two and the four hydroxy estradiol, then it's basically converted into methoxy estrogen. Uh, two and four uh, by making use of the COMT enzyme. So a methyl, uh, by using the COMT enzyme, a methyl group is added to these different, uh, these two different types of estrogens, and um, and that's called a methylation uh, reaction. Um, and once that occurs, they become less active. Now the four hydroxy estradiol. Uh, gets converted into the methylated form with much less speed and uh, seems to be, uh, doesn't occur with the same amount of uh, speed as the 2-hydroxy estradiol. And you say, well, why is that important? Um, well, um, basically, well, both forms of uh, 2 and 4-hydroxy uh, estradiol uh, can create some oxidative stress in the body. The four may do it with a little more, uh, with increased um, intensity than the two form. And so since the two form is already eliminated quickly from the body, if you, um, you know, have problems with your, uh, remember there's two different forms of uh, CYP enzymes that convert into the two and four hydroxylated estrogen, um, the 1B1 is for the 4. So if you have an alteration in that enzyme and it does not work very well, uh, then you may end up with higher amounts of that and possibly higher oxidative stress. Now, um, that's sort of a uh, maybe a stretch as far as where the research is, um, and uh, but it did seem to point to that in the uh, review article that uh, that I was reading to kind of brush up on some of this information, and I'll have a link to that in the uh, the blog article and uh, in the uh, description of the video in case you're interested. Um, but um, there's also some nice graphics and stuff in there too. Um, but uh, so so. Alterations in those two enzymes can uh, possibly point to some imbalances or some you know, negative effects of estrogen as it's being broken down. But uh, when it comes to the COMT enzyme, if you have an alteration in this, uh, this may lead to greater amounts of the 4-hydroxy uh, estrogen as well, as well as the 2. Um, alteration in the COMT enzyme basically... Uh, leads to more estrogens in general, um, but it may lead to more amounts, higher amounts of this uh, 4 version than the 2 version because it's already sluggish with the 4 version. So generally speaking, when we talk about an alteration in the COMT enzyme, we're talking about uh, a slowdown in the COMT enzyme. And <clears throat> Uh, sometimes people refer to uh, COMT as being sped up, and that's just the normal uh, normal COMT enzyme function. So in the beginning, when I referred to the COMT enzyme can uh, basically result in higher or lower estrogens, it just depends on what kind of genetics you have for this. So if you have normal genetics for COMT, that means you're going to have normal metabolism. It's works very efficiently. If you have an uh, alteration in the COMT, whether it's heterozygous or homozygous, then it's going to be slowed down respective to the number of alterations you have, one or two. So um, so that brings up, uh, so that sort of t tells uh, the story of what higher amounts of uh, estrogens, you know, can possibly, where that could come from. So the last thing I wanted to point out uh, with regard to estrogen breakdown is there's more than one pathway that the estrogens can get eliminated from. So after the methylation step, there is a final uh, step uh, uh, that occurs uh, called sulfation or glucuronidation. So this is basically when you're adding a sulfate or a, a 
glucarate molecule to the uh, to the methylated form of estradiol. Now this can happen either before it's methylated or after. Um, the methylation step basically gets it uh, through a little quicker, but if you have alterations in your glucuronidation or sulfation pathways, it adds more burden to these uh, other two pathways, uh, depending on where the problem is. Glucuronidation is a very efficient way to um, eliminate uh, estrogens and other molecules from the body, and once these uh, steps occur, uh, the, the uh, estrogens are basically uh, inactive as far as uh, that's uh, my understanding, um, and they quickly get eliminated from the body. So uh, not only do COMT alterations uh, lead to hormone imbalance or can basically create uh, the picture of where why your hormones are imbalanced or where the balance is at, um, so can these other things like this, uh, cytochrome uh, P450, glucuronidation, and uh, sulfation pathways. So just because you have, uh, if this is the case, just because you have a COMT alteration, don't assume that you necessarily have uh, problems with estrogen balance. Now, it could lead to that, um, but it's not always the case. It really depends on how these other uh, things are functioning in your body. And I wanted to point out too, you don't have to have an alteration in the COMT to um, create a higher uh, estrogen or slowed uh, COMT uh, activity. It could be just that you're deficient in the cofactors, uh, magnesium and SAMe, that's creating this problem. All right, so hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how COMT alterations can uh, affect your hormone balance, lead to hormone imbalance, or in some cases, not necessarily. If you like the video, please click on the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.